Thank you. Uh, as introduced, my name is uh, Il-Hun Kim. I direct the disarmament and non-proliferation division at ROK MOFA. I wish to thank the host, Kainak, for, for inviting me to chair this session titled Empowering the Next Generation. As we look back at the five decades of MPT and look forward to its next 50 years, we cannot but address the issue of sustainability. And we cannot uh, talk about sustainability without the very people who will be leading the future. So I believe the organizers have chosen a very pertinent topic, which is integral to the overall discussions we're having. Uh, in light of the time constraint, we'll first hear the presentations to be followed by Q&As and discussions, if time allows. Please kindly hold on to your questions or comments until the, all the presentations have been made. So we have three panelists with us today, uh, beginning with Ms. Che Yuyun of Kainat. She majored in nuclear engineering, uh, both in undergraduate and, uh, and for her master's degree programs at Seoul National University. She joined Kainat and INSA, short form for uh, International Nuclear Nonproliferation and Security Academy as researcher in 2020. Her work centers on developing training courses in nuclear security and domestic public awareness programs, as well as promoting international cooperation in this area. Uh, without further ado, let me invite Ms. Che to take the floor. Over to you. Thank you, Chair, for your kind introduction. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening for everyone. I'm Yuyun Choi, and I'm a researcher in Kainak Insa. It is my pleasure to have an opportunity to speak at this meaningful event and in front of many experts in nuclear non-proliferation and security. Today, I would like to talk about INSA's efforts to empower the next generation. First, I would like to briefly introduce Kainak INSA, then move on to our efforts to, our, uh, to empower the next generation. Then I will wrap up with our planned activities this year. Let me review a few slides with you to briefly introduce Kainak INSA. INSA stands for International Nuclear, Nuclear Non-Proliferation and Security Academy. It was established in February 2014, according to a presidential pledge during the 2010 Nuclear Summit. Our vision is to contribute to world peace by providing nuclear non-proliferation and security training programs and based on this vision, our two main objectives are fostering human resources and, and experts and raising awareness on nuclear non-proliferation and spreading security culture. Let me introduce some of our training facilities in Kainak. The most representative facility might be the SET. As you may notice from its name, SET is constructed for various purposes such as research, training, and test for physical protection. The facility implemented most of the equipment in a typical physical protection system at a nuclear power plant, such as sensor, alarm, and CCTV, etc. For this reason, SET enables us to secure efficiency and effectiveness in implementing a physical protection regime and enforce performance-based regulation. Lastly, this facility is being used in security personnel training, which helps nurture both domestic and international nuclear security manpower. For experimental facilities, there is a radiation measurement and equipment training laboratory, especially designed for training in safeguards. Several inspection equipment is furnished, including IAEA inspection equipment to detect gamma ray radiation and to analyze uranium concentration. Also, there is a clean room for estimation and assay of trace nuclear materials. For training tools, X-ray image reading program is used in training for physical protection security personnel, and web-based e-learning system is also set up and being used for various purposes. Uh, when it comes to our operational status, INSA is now operating as Training Institute for Nuclear Safety, uh, Nuclear Non-Proliferation and Security in Republic of Korea. Our duty can be classified into four parts, which includes international training courses, compulsory training courses, public awareness program, and international cooperation. For international training, we are hosting INSA training courses as well as INSA IAEA co-host training courses 
on nuclear security, safeguards, as well as trade, strategic trade controls. Unfortunately, due to COVID-19 pandemic, international training forces have been postponed and delayed from last year. For domestic compulsory training courses, which are required by law, we are operating courses for physical protection personnel and for nuclear facility operators and fuel cycle related researchers, as well as for nuclear security inspectors. We are also hosting public awareness program for university students and government officials. And lastly, we have cooperated with various institutes all around the world, including IAEA and SSC, which stands for a network for nuclear security and support centers and some laboratories in the US. So let me tell you more about our efforts to empower the next generation. As I mentioned before, we are hosting several public awareness programs to enhance the public's understanding of nuclear non-proliferation and security. The main participants are nuclear engineering or radiation-related major students and government officials. The program is, is composed of both lectures and exercises, including facility tour, and starting from this year, we are planning a demand-based program for each institute and related survey are now ongoing. Most recently, an online colloquium for the 15th anniversary of non-proliferation treaty was held by Department of International Cooperation in Kainak. The participants were undergrad and graduate school students in the Department of Nuclear Engineering in various universities. The event program included topics that addresses the history and international issues of nuclear non-proliferation and disarmament, as well as nuclear export control. Also, Q&A session allowed for a lively discussion on potential career paths and job opportunities in the field of nuclear non-proliferation and security. Lastly, INSA is participating in manpower training project funded by Nuclear Safety and Security Commission. The objective of this project is to provide on-the-job training to enhance expertise on nuclear safety and security regulation for nuclear engineering major students. We are planning a one-week exercise-based uh, program during the summer and winter break. Actually, two days ago on Tuesday, we signed a MOU with KIN's Korea Institute of Nuclear Safety and Coffin's Korea Foundation of Nuclear Safety for continuing a cooperation on this project. Uh, when I was in college, there was few opportunities to hear or take course on nuclear non-proliferation and security. So through this project, I hope more and more students are getting familiar with the concept of nuclear non-proliferation and this field. And we are expecting to provide useful and informative programs that will contribute to fostering the next generation. Before I finish my presentation, I would like to briefly introduce our plan activities for the rest of this year. INSA is now planning to hold online training courses and to support this, we are now assessing training needs through an ongoing survey. The objective of this survey is to gather data that will inform our demand-based planning and deployment of new training courses. Thankfully, we have got some responses and we are still waiting for further feedback. And the survey result will be utilized for planning online workshops, trainings, and public awareness program, and establishing midterm and long-term um, plan in INSA. Lastly, we are now developing new training modules in cybersecurity and physical protection. Since the physical protection system, PPS, is based on digital technology in these days, the training modules for cybersecurity based on PPS and nuclear facilities are now under development. This will be an introductory course to bring awareness of cybersecurity to PPS personnel, and also for the sake of understanding of vital area and vital area identification procedures, related training modules are being developed. For this, we will be leveraging the Republic of Korea's regulatory experience in vital area identification using probabilistic safety assessment methodology. 
Likewise, INSA keeps seeking substantiality of our training courses and trying to develop field applicable training and workshops to enhance the effectiveness of the program. And that's all I have for you today, and thank you for your attention. Uh, thank you, Ms. Choi. Uh, it was indeed a very elaborate introduction to the work of uh, INSA and its contributions. Uh, I was personally involved in the preparations for the 2012 uh, Seoul Nuclear Security Summit from which INSA was born. So it is all the more impressive to learn how far INSA has come to establish itself as a leading uh, international center of excellence. Thank you once again. I now wish to invite uh, Ms. Che Yunhua of NERAC, Nuclear Nonproliferation Education and Research Center at uh, KITE, where she serves as a program manager on global nuclear nonproliferation and security. Prior to her work at NEREC, she accumulated a wealth of experience in nuclear policy at Asan Institute for Policy Studies and Korea National Diplomatic Academy. She was also part of the 2012 Seoul Nuclear Security Summit as an organizer of the NGO Summit held alongside. She's now a doctoral candidate in international politics at Korea University. With that, I would now like to invite Ms. Choi to deliver her presentation. Yes. Uh, thank you for your kind introduction and thank Kainak for organizing uh, this important event during the uh, COVID pandemic. Uh, on behalf of NERIC KAIST, I appreciate this opportunity to introduce distinguished speakers and guests um, to NERIC's activities to empower the next generation in the field of nuclear non-proliferation and security. Um, today, Yes, sorry. Uh, today, my presentation will cover a um, brief introduction to NEREC, uh, our three main activities, and um, NEREC's achievements focusing on um, NEREC alumni network, and uh, which will be followed by the conclusion. So, uh, KAIST NEREC was established in uh, 2014. Uh, it continues to be the only university based uh, nuclear non proliferation center in South Korea. Um, NERAC is dedicated to education, uh, research, and related uh, international cooperation. Um, so uh, why does NERAC as a think tank um, educate the young students as well as conduct research? Uh, the only reason is to promote peaceful use of um, nuclear energy. Uh, NERAC really works for the peaceful use of nuclear technology. Uh, for the purpose, we focus on global nuclear non-proliferation. Uh, we approach to that um, goals strategically uh, by developing related human resources, conducting interdisciplinary research, and constru um, constructing international discourses on the peaceful use of uh, nuclear energy. Uh, so we, our success, we owe our success for the last seven years uh, to the support and contributions of various domestic and overseas sponsors and partners. Uh, due to time limitations, I'm not able to name all the institutes listed here, but uh, I'd like to uh, express our deepest gratitude to um, some institutes, including the Ministry of um, Foreign Affairs, RK, the Center Foundation, APLN, KINAC, uh, KHMP, KONICOF, and KNDA, and Stanford CISAC, and the Harvard Belfast Center for their uh, generous sponsorship and uh, continued support. Uh, then specifically, how has NERAC empowered uh, our next generation? Um, as this summary shows, um, NERAC runs two competitive uh, educational programs, International Summer Fellows Program, Research Fellows Program, and one international conference on nuclear non-proliferation, uh, which fosters professional mentoring um, on young generation. So from now on, uh, I'll present each program in more detail. Uh, NERAC Summer Fellows Program uh, started in uh, 2014. Uh, it aims to develop a closely international community that will contribute to nuclear non-proliferation and global peace. Uh, through this program, our fellows are able to acquire key fundamentals of nuclear non-proliferation, and they are encouraged to develop a um, friendship-based now, networks among themselves and to interact with 
um, government agencies and expert groups in Korea, China, Japan, and U.S. as well. Uh, here, um, what, I to, uh, what I'd like to em emphasize is the selection categories. Uh, annually, we select about uh, 30 fellows from three groups of strategic importance. The first group is nuclear newcomer countries, the second one is uh, advanced countries, and uh, the third one is South Korea. Uh, as you know, new, uh, new nuclear technologies are developing and um, a global nuclear market uh, keeps gradually growing, expanding. So uh, as of today, however, there's a lot of debates on whether it will be an opportunity or a threat to the uh, global nuclear non-proliferation. So that's the very reason why we should pay attention to the differentiated roles of uh, nuclear newcomers, advanced nuclear powers, and South Korea to enhance a global nuclear non-proliferation. So based on this understanding, we select fellows and educate them to nurture nuclear policy experts who believe in the value of nuclear non-proliferation. So NEVAC provides with intensive lectures and seminar series, uh, group research and um, field trips, team building, and alumni meetings. So the eighth Summer Fellows Program will be held in Jeju and uh, Daejeon RK with 31 excellent fellows. Uh, due to the COVID-19 pandemic, we will run the program in uh, online and offline hi hybrid style. Um, so um, here I've included several photos and excerpts from fellows' reflections to give you a real atmosphere of the uh, program. Uh, fellows pay great attention to every activity from taking lectures and conduct research to uh, putting on a talent show, as you see from the, these photos. Uh, many of the fellows evaluated the program as a life-changing experience, both professionally and personally. Uh, next, I'd like to tell you about NARA Research Fellows Program. It is for graduate students of Korea in the political or science, uh, social science domain. Uh, it is not just to enhance their capabilities, uh, but also to build Korea's policy development capacity in the long run. Uh, since its start in uh, 2016, we have trained 20, um, 23 research fellows, and this year, six new fellows uh, initiated their research. Uh, their research addresses issues on global um, nuclear non-proliferation and security, as well as North Korea uh, nuclear problem. Uh, the fellows received 2 million Korean won um, as a grant for a year, plus one on a research mentoring by NARA faculty members. Uh, with this support, they are expected to publish one paper at the end of the program. Um, through the NARA conference, we provide our fellows with the opportunity to present their research outcomes to global experts. Uh, the conference serves as the final stage of the summer uh, fellows program. It allows our fellows uh, to communicate with conference speakers and guests about their research. Uh, the eighth NARA conference uh, will be held online and offline Daejeon, RK, uh, on August 3 to 5 uh, with internationally recognized uh, scholars such as uh, Scott Sagan from uh, Stanford, uh, Steven, uh, Professor Miller from Harvard, and Professor Jong Yi Moon uh, from Seoul Institutes, along with many others. Uh, by annually offering these, uh, all these activities um, for the last seven years, NERA has made a, a every effort to empower the next generation of leaders in nuclear non-proliferation and global peace. But uh, what are our major achievements? Uh, many ask us. So as you see from this uh, map, a truly global network of NERA Sun Fellows alumni we have. Um, these 181 uh, alumni represent uh, 72 top notch universities from uh, 37 countries. Uh, the regions our alumni reside, colored in orange on this map, cover Asia, Middle East, uh, North and South America, most of Europe, and a few parts of Africa. So such a global community is not just the greatest achievement of NERAD, but also a cornerstone to uh, the future of nuclear non-proliferation and the future of the peaceful use of nuclear energy, we hope. 
And there is interest to go beyond building um, such a network. We have tracked the progress of our analogized professional uh, development and career path. About 50% of our fellows are still pursuing academic degrees in universities, by the way. Uh, there are some tangible outcomes. Um, four fellows work in academia, 23 in government and research institutes, uh, 18 international or domestic institutes related to nuclear security and uh, non-proliferation, and 22 uh, works in various industries. In addition, some of the research fellows are working in institutes like the Korean CIA. So we believe that they are making a difference every day in their own place. And as you see from these photos, uh, there are alumni connect online and offline. And the, uh, the newly established NARA Alumni Association is tasked uh, with maintaining our global, a growing global network. To share our achievements more effectively, uh, we published our first annual report in uh, 2017 in English. Uh, in, it summarizes the major outcomes of education research and international cooperation. And it shows the growth of NARAC both in quantity and in quality. So there are a, a total of 60 papers in the reports from, us, uh, from uh, 2016 to 2019. And soon, an additional 10 papers will be included um, in the 2020 annual report. Our research covers various topics under the theme of the global system of nuclear non-proliferation and security, the nuclear exporting or importing countries, uh, the development of nuclear technologies and the North Korean nuclear problem. Uh, one distinguished feature of our Summer Fellows research is that um, they carry out case studies on their country of origin to ad address issues uh, related to nuclear export and import. So, in conclusion, seven years ago, NARAC, um, NARAC's dream was to create a generation of people with insights and vision for peaceful and responsible use of nuclear technology and achieving global peace. Um, that dream is still alive and with us, and NARA continues, to, uh, continues our endeavor to empower and produce the next generation leaders. Now, NARA hopes to hear uh, about our fellows' leadership role in nuclear nonproliferation and security. Um, it will be the highest compliment that NARA can receive. So finally, we at NARAC hope that uh, our programs will be sustainable and have a long-term impact on nuclear proliferation and global peace. So this wraps up my presentation. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, uh, Michelle, for a very detailed introduction to the extensive work of NARAC in empowering prospective nuclear experts. Uh, my ministry has in recent years been an active supporter of uh, NARAC's program and appreciates the imp important contribution. Uh, I had the pleasure of Mr. Shin Jae-woo in Vienna, when I was in Vienna, and I didn't realize he was one of the NARAC alumni. So I look forward to an ever-increasing uh, pool of NARAC alumni in the coming years. Thank you once again, Mr. Chair. And our final panelist today is uh, Assistant Director Jin Rui from my own division at MOFA. It is, it is my first time to see her CV, and here it is. Uh, she majored in international relations in her bachelor and master's degree programs prior to joining MOFA in 2015. Except for one year in the Oceans and Territory Division, she has been an active member of Disarmament and Non-Proliferation Division. She was in charge of conventional weapons and lethal autonomous weapons before she turned to chemical weapons and, of course, UN agenda on youth disarmament and non-proliferation. I now invite her to take the floor, please. Oh, thank you, Director Kim, and thank you for giving me a chance to take part in this good meaningful seminar as a panelist. And uh, as uh, my presentation will cover the importance of engaging, empowering, and educating the youth in the field of disarmament non-proliferation. And with the international and Korean government's effort for the issue. 
So as with the panelists before me already mentioned, empowering the next generation is really important and meaningful for the future. So more generally, engaging youth in the field of disarmament and non-proliferation issues is also essential in consideration of following aspects. First, youth is a key agent of social change, economic development, and technological innovation. Also, young people can make the promotion and attainment of sustainable peace and security. They can stimulate the stagnated discussions by providing their fresh views, insights, and ideas. Given the reasons, reasons explained, international society has put their interests on, on the issues. In 2018, United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres announced Agenda for Disarmament, in which he recognized young people as a tremendous force for change in the world. In Agenda, there are many specific action, action items, and one of them is Agenda 38, establish, establishment of a platform for youth engagement. In 2019, UN General, General Assembly resolution titled Youth, Disarmament, and Non-Proliferation was adopted by consensus of all, members, all UN member states, encouraging member states to promote the meaningful and inclusive participation of young people in the field of disarmament. Given that UN Office for Disarmament Affairs, UNODA, launched a new youth out outreach initiative such as holding various webinars to engage youth and providing educational materials for them. The Republic of Korea have provided active support for the launching initiative, and I, I would like to share one of the results made by UNODA with support of the Korea. Disarmament in the 21st century, an overview of the pillars of the disarmament agenda. In 2018, United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres launched an agenda for disarmament. In a more complicated world where international tensions are rising and conflict continues, disarmament and non-proliferation have to be at the center of the United Nations work. The agenda bases these efforts on four key pillars, bringing the objectives of disarmament into the 21st century. One, disarmament to save humanity. Weapons of mass destruction pose an existential threat to us all. The work of the UN under this pillar focuses on securing us against the dangers of biological and chemical weapons and pursuing a world free of nuclear weapons. 2. Disarmament that saves lives. As deadly, destructive and complex conflicts continue to spread, we must also address the humanitarian impact of conventional weapons and provide effective regulation from the use of explosive weapons in populated areas to the illicit trade in weapons and unsafe storage to a reduction in military spending. Three. Actually, because of the time frame, uh, you can see the whole video clips in the UNODA site. So the Republic of Korea has been also trying to participate for the efforts with UN and uh, so with, with the UN uh, Secret Secretary General's agenda, the Korea agreed to be a champ champion of Agenda 38 in 2019. And then uh, UN General Assembly resolution on youth and disarmament and non-preparation tabled by the Korea and co-sponsored by for 84 member states were adopted by consensus. So, in 2020, uh, USMPT conference was held, and I will focus on the conference <coughs> uh, consider in consideration of the seminar's topic and objectives. In 2020, uh, also a special ses youth session of the, uh, in the occasion of 19th ROK UN Joint Conference on Disarmament and Non-Proliferation Issues was held. And this year, Youth Forum on Disarmament and Non-Proliferation uh, will be held 29th and 30 June. So I will more focus on uh, Youth Ambit Conference. So last year, 
as it's the fifth year of the entry into force of the NPT, uh, we started the project to enhance the participation of young generation. And it was a type of model conference of youth as representatives of 25 countries. So during the one day event, uh, with the preliminary, five preliminary sessions uh, via Facebook Live. And on the, la the last day <clears throat> in July 10th, uh, <clears throat> we held a conference. And during the one-day event, participants reviewed the implementation of Article 6 of the MPT and discussed the ways to make progress in nuclear disarmament. Bearing in mind, uh, bearing in mind the nexus between all three pillars of the treaty. So uh, they represented 25 states carefully selected to include a regionally and politically diverse group and try to come up with one final document adopted by consensus. So many, <coughs> uh, many distinguishes uh, send the welcoming and wel welcoming video clips and you can see the Ban Ki-moon, the former Secretary General, and Raphael Grossi of the IA, uh, Secretary General of IAEA. And also, uh, Izumi Nakamits, uh, high representative of, for disarmament affairs, and she said, ideas from the youth can bring forward new concepts and innovative approaches. And also, Zlavine, Gustavo Zlavinen, the present President designate the 10th MPT review conference. Also, he said it is important that the voices of the next generation are heard now. So you can see the pictures of the MPT conference, and uh, this is a uh, this is a sketch of the conference. The 2020 Youth NPT Conference took place in Seoul on July 10th to provide us a chance to look at the current status of NPT implementation from youth's perspectives. It was a one-day event, and our schedule was packed as we had to deliver our opening statement, exchange views about the implementation status, and reach an agreement on what we want to include in the final document. We had dedicated six full months to prepare for the conference starting from our orientation day in February. We had special lectures from former ambassadors, professors, and government officials on the treaty itself, the history of nuclear disarmament, and recent trends and issues. In addition to these lectures, we did our own research to prepare our statements and present our positions well. It was challenging, but we learned a lot. And they came up with lots of new ideas during the meeting. So some points seemed to ideal or unrealistic, but some such as obligating countries to submit implementation reports were worth exploring further, further since these are also being discussed at the actual review conference. So among 13 articles of final documents, uh, below four points are notable for us, the older generation. And the four in the documents, uh, for the systematic implementation of MPT Article 6, states parties could introduce peer reviews or the quotas in nuclear reduction goals and a mandatory reporting system and over a system for measuring nuclear disarmament status. Uh, that means the, a nuclear point scoring system. So compared with uh, the uh, former review conference, they ac accomplished the things that all the generation failed at the last review conference. That means they finally made an agreement by consensus. So they hoped that countries could reach an agreement like they could do to improve MPT implementation and strengthen the MPT regime that came up with a final document at the upcoming review conference. So they also hope that the voices of the younger generation will be heard more loudly, more frequently, and reflected more in the disarmament issues. So this is the end of the presentation, and thank you, and please pay attention to upcoming the Youth from on June. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, 
for the detailed briefing. As mentioned, the RK government attaches great importance to educating, engaging, and empowering the youth in the field of disarmament and non-proliferation, not only in support of promoting the UN Secretary General's disarmament agenda, but also with the belief that it will contribute to promoting international peace and security. Thank you, Ms. Jim, once again. Um, uh, I will have, I, it is to my very deep regret that I will have to leave the room to catch a train to the finance ministry where I will be negotiating to secure funding for empowering next generation in disarmament and non-proliferation. So I'll, but I trust that my able colleague and friend, uh, Mr. Zhang there, will take over and handle the questions and comments. Uh, but I'll just uh, end with the uh, inviting for comments. Uh, so now that we have heard from the panelists, I would now like to open the floor for general comments and questions. For those who wish to intervene, please raise the hand if you're on the floor or type in the chat box if you're online. Kindly identify yourselves and also specify who your question or comment is directed to. Uh, have you, while you're typing, uh, I will take the prerogative as chair and pose my first question to Ms. Che. Yu Yan, uh, would it be possible to share some preliminary observations about the survey as well as upcoming plans for online uh, training or education you mentioned in your slides? Thank you. Yes, okay. Thank you for the question, Chair. So as I mentioned through my presentation, we are now doing some training needs assessment for online course delivery. So for international training, we've got more than 20, around 20 individual responses from various countries, including Vietnam, Philippines, Indonesia, Ukraine, et cetera. And the interest topics were very various, including all specific subjects in safeguards and cybersecurity and physical protection. Also for domestic one, we have requested a few university with nuclear engineering program to reply the survey. And we've got around five, five reply from university and they also replied very various needs, including fundamentals and some exercise training in safeguards and cybersecurity. And also for online training, since the COVID-19 pandemic has lasted longer than what we had expected, we decided to prepare remote delivery for both domestic and international training. So based on the results of survey, which is now ongoing, we will soon set up the training schedule and deliver some uh, informative programs for both uh, international and domestic needs. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Ms. Che. Uh, is there any questions from the floor? Yes, please. Yes, this is Song Sun Jang from Kainek. I have a question on the use NPT symposiums. So uh, compared to the conventional NPT, NPT symposium and the issues discussed in the uh, in, in NPT uh, meetings, what is the surprise and differences from these use NPT conferences? Uh, so uh, thank you for the question. Your question is about the um, the differences in uh, difference of the MPT review conference and use MPT conference, right? I think uh, actually uh, because of the time frame and the topic, uh, we've only focused on implementation of MPT Article Six. So the student uh, discuss only on that point. And uh, actually I didn't explain the other uh, documents, uh, uh, the other documents uh, con contents except for points, but there are many uh, uh, similar points with the review conference, including um, uh, cooperation of, of Stockholm initiative such as so I think they are at some points are uh, ideal and unrealistic, but at some point it, it can be uh, it can be applied for the next or upcoming review conference for the older generation. Thank you. Uh, we are a little bit behind our original schedule, so due to the time constraints, uh, I'd like to close this session here. But uh, before. 
uh, the director Kim uh, left. He left us uh, his closing message. So on behalf of uh, director Kim, I'd like to deliver it to you. Uh, I wish to thank the panelists for their thorough briefings and all pa uh, participants for their active contribution in making this uh, rich discussion. As for the ROK government, and as introduced in Ms. Jin's presentation, we will continue to lead the youth disarmament and non-proliferation agenda at the United Nations to promote sustained implementation of our NPT commitments, as well as disarmament and non-proliferation efforts at the local, regional, and international levels. Uh, in the course, we naturally look forward to the support of the export expert community as well as the academia. Uh, finally, I want to reiterate my thanks to Kaina for organizing this meaningful session. Uh, the session is closed. Thank you all.